no, this is, uh, it's my turn, right, Shita? Hello, Lily. Okay. How are you? Nice to see you. I am really grateful for this opportunity to talk to you and much more to Charlotte and, of course, the Geneva Learning Foundation, which I joined just like March of this year. It was like a friend told me something about uh, this Geneva learning. And uh, then I looked at it and it says immunization agenda. And I have been working on vaccines for such a long time. And yet this is the first time that I have heard about the Geneva Learning Foundation. And true enough, I joined because I wanted to really learn so much. And mind you, it was always midnight in the Philippines when I joined. And, you know, I just want to tell you what the Philippines is like. It is an archipelago where there is so many areas hard to reach. I have listened to so many of the speakers who said that, indeed, it is a challenge, the hard to reach areas to get vaccination there. But, you know, in the Philippines way back in the 90s, the midwives will, will cross dangerous rivers. They will climb hills and valleys just to reach those those children, you start our EPI way back in 1976. And since the time on, vaccination has been at the forefront of child health. Unfortunately, the elderly, to whom I will address my topic today, has not been vaccinated so much. Because if you compute, the elderly from 60 and above has not experienced that kind of vaccination. Whereas the others, the younger ones, are used to it. So when I joined and I wanted to know more about uh, what's going on, how does the immunization agenda, knowing that it is for everyone, everywhere, and every age to get the benefits of vaccine for good health and well-being. That was the motto of the immunization agenda 2030. I really felt that I needed to learn more. And mind you also, I've been doing vaccinology <laughs> for such a long time. You know, I'm a pediatrician of 45 years and a vaccinologist for more than 35 years doing vaccinology, vaccine teaching. I'm a professor. But this Geneva Learning Foundation, actually, and I'm sure all the members here who are listening, I hope that you can really get as much from what Reda and Charlotte has been saying. Because for my part, and next slide please, I'd like to tell you that I have been on social media trying to figure out how to really engage people. And then I suddenly realized that we do have people who have their problems. And so we said, well, why not ask some of the ordinary people to tell us their problems? And soon enough, we had an 85-year-old mother and a grandmother whose son came to us and said his mom is reluctant because he has heard so much about harm that is being given to vaccine and he doesn't, she doesn't want to be vaccinated. But we all know that the elderly, even in the Philippines, have not been so much you know, uh, concentrating on elderly. And, and yet they are the most vulnerable they are at the highest risk of serious and fatal COVID. We know that. And they have to be the first one. In fact, our priority station list says that the first priority should be the healthcare worker. The second one should be the elderly. But this mom could not get herself to be vaccinated, though he has heard from some her son and from her other friends maybe and so what the son said was, let's take you to the experts. And this is what happened next. Because then uh, we featured her. She, she was scared. She has heard so many news about, you know, um, there's going to be a myocarditis, Guillain-Barre from COVID vaccination. So she says, you know, it, it's not, it's not going to be for her. She has not been vaccinated and she's not going to, you know, have life be full of uh, all this nonsense about vaccine. So next slide, please. So what we did, and this is very nice, we did have a kind of a podcast every Saturday, 7 to 8, since about 
uh, the start of the pandemic, talking about you know immunization and the impact in childhood immunization because we're almost all pediatricians here. You see, um, we have six vaccinologists, vaccine experts. We have community pediatricians, uh, a member of the National Immunization Technical Advisory Group, and even member of the National EPI Manager. And we actually are the ones talking to people and getting experts to give their eyes. But we realized that when I was listening to the Geneva Learning Foundation, I really thought that, yes, we should really listen, listen to ordinary people too, not just health workers, because they know what they're doing, but the ordinary people don't. So here we have the grandmother, the son told us to, you know, let, let's her, let's her uh, be focused. And the elderly was focused. And we talked to her and we said, you know, your son loves you so much. On Mother's Day, we featured her because it's Mother's Day. And, you know, in the Philippines, let me give you another background. In the Philippines, we are very much a family-oriented uh, type of population, extended family. Uh, almost 80% are Christians. Uh, we have 15% Muslim population. And we are always, you know, uh, mostly looking after the elderly. So this son who expressed to his mom that you should really talk to the experts. So then we focused on that seven to eight, Mother's Day special. It was on the occasion of Mother's Day, you know, May, second month, uh, second Sunday of May was the Mother's Day. And we sort of told her how, you know, elderly are really going to be so vulnerable, so risky to have the COVID. What, what's the problem? And she told us, you know, yes, she hasn't been vaccinated before. She's not going to uh, use it. She's, strong. She's active at 85. Why get vaccinated, you know? And so the, the podcast, um, the experts, all the EPI managers, these are community pediatrician. We have uh, immunologists there. And soon enough, she says, okay, I'll think about it. The next thing we knew, and this is actually going to be so nice, is we heard from the son that right after our conversation the following day, oh no, Sunday, Monday, because it was always Saturday. On Monday, we had that very nice news that the son told us she got vaccinated and so happy about that. On the following Saturday, we got her to come back and ask her what her experiences were. And she told us that, yes, it was so mild. There was nothing that she experienced. And I, we thought we were so happy and we would always now feature this kind of conversation, listening to people, listening to what they have to tell us, so that in the long run, we may be able to encourage more people. Now, the fact is, since the... 90s, the Philippines have always been high in immunization coverage. But something happened in 2015, no, 2018, when the dengue vaccine caused a lot of chaos and personal issues that made mothers think that vaccines are. And this is very big to the Philippines. And some of you might remember that the dengue vaccine, which was first introduced in the Philippines, was so controversial. There is still a uh, kind of a uh, indictment for some of the health officials who introduced the dengue vaccine because they thought it was going to cause harm and cause death. And from a very high 93% vaccine confidence that the Philippines had in 2015, you know, in 2018, it went down to 32% vaccine confidence. And in 2019, we had the most number of missiles death. And that was so disastrous because we thought, we the vaccine advocates, thought that, you know, if we do not do something, if we do not restore the trust, if we are not able to address major aftershocks, those misinformation, disinformation, that some of those, you know, I don't know how you will call them, are they really um, 
ignorant or are they really the anti-vaxxers? Are they really the devils? We don't know. They say that only 2%. But when things happen like this, it can really be disastrous. And the 1,000 deaths that we got from missiles in 2019 is a testimony that you cannot let your guards down when it comes to vaccine confidence. You have to continue fighting misinformation and disinformation. Right now, we have from a 25% elderly, elderly vaccination way back in 2021 and going on, we now have 75% of our elderly being able to get vaccination throughout most of the national capital region. And so this is what is for us happiness. If you say what are the key learnings? Yes, we felt that the love of a son cannot be discounted. A mother who knows that the vaccination will give an expression of love, will be an expression of concern and affection. To me, this is something that will also benefit our vaccination programs, listen to them, listen to what they have to say, and address it with the experts in tow. Not just one, but two, three, or more experts will be much more kind of believable. Because there are many fake experts that can only tell you, you know, this much. Then they get started the disinformation. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And thank you, Charlotte, for that a chance to be here. This is like a laboratory for me. This Geneva uh, Learning Foundation to me is like a hands-on. It is something that uh, tells people globally to do something. And I, I agree. We have to spread the word that we can actually benefit from learning either from social media or listening to ordinary people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lulu. Uh, great. I, I think I'm so honored to have been able to share this session with all of you. With you five, uh, the enthusiasm is amazing. I have seen the chat blow up. Uh, really incredible. A um, couple of remarks from me, and I will also perhaps challenge the speakers here today and perhaps some of the participants.